So, I'm um, Jennifer Quigley. I'm the Executive Director of the U.S. Campaign for Burma. We are a advocacy organization based here in the United States. Um, grassroots members um, around the world uh, in the United States that focuses exclusively on human rights, democracy, justice, and national reconciliation promotion in Burma, particularly through advocating to the U.S. government, to other international actors, the U.N., um, and, and now um, businesses as they engage, um, begin to engage in, in Burma. And so some of our, our focuses most recently have been on issues regarding military to military relations, an increase in trade and investment um, from governments and corporations, as well as the need for um, an international investigation into the different violence and crimes against humanity taking place in a culture of impunity in Burma. Um, I myself have been working with USMA for Burma for almost seven years and before that I actually worked for the Women's League of Burma so it's a coalition um, organization of 12 women's organizations representing several of Burma's ethnic groups um, on the Thai Burma border. Actually a tremendous amount that has to do with this issue of land. And so as the US Committee for Burma um, some of our biggest priorities are to make sense of what's happening in Burma for the role of the international community. And so with, with the violence that's taking place in this culture of impunity, we're seeing that a lot of international actors, um, and for those of you who are not familiar, because I feel like we've delved sort of in, there have been um, 250,000 people displaced in the last two years, more than 100,000 from the Kachin conflict, and more than 140,000 from Rohingya slash other um, anti-Muslim violence that's taken place. So it is sort of a very large scale. It's not Syria, but it's still a, a very large population in a short period of time. And so we're, um, we're talking about a lot of land and a lot of people. But what we're seeing with this is, as, as Debbie said, it happens with impunity. Um, and some of the international community reactions, particularly governments that want to see the best side of the Burmese government and the reformers as they're deemed, is that this is an issue of, you know, now that there's this opening and this lifting of that control, that the reason that this is happening is because, because of that, and the government doesn't know how to handle it. And they, they don't know how to police their own people when they did that for decades. Um, and we're seeing really a parallel track here of which they are monitoring and arresting and controlling land rights activists and, and arresting them, as Debbie pointed out. But you're not seeing that same level of monitoring arrests and convictions of those carrying out the anti-Muslim violence. Mm -hmm. And so you can see very clearly how much the government is not, it's not a capacity issue. It's not that they don't know how to handle this type of situation. It's they, they they see that there is an advantage for them in allowing the impunity to persist. And that, for us, mitigates the international community must play a role when it comes to establishing an international and independent investigation. Because how else is it are we going to be able to determine the role that the government has played um, to really basically solidify what we all know is that this is happening in a culture of impunity, and therefore that there is a role that the international community needs to play to intervene um, and provide justice mechanisms. Because violence, if perpetrators of violence never feel as if they would be held to account or that they would be brought to justice, violence will just continue unabated. And so there needs to be, the international community needs to understand the reality of the situation and their role in that. Um, and I mean, 100% agree with Debbie about this issue of how, how much of this is all really connected back to the need for the government to have taken over the land um, for the lucrativeness that land holds for foreign investment. Because Burma is now considered to be, you know, like the frontier. Every country's companies want in. They want to be able to pillage and rape the land of Burma as much as possible. And who suffers? The Burmese people suffer. So one of the biggest things that, that we have tried to get the US government and, and others as well to prioritize is this issue that we should not be allowing investment, we should not be allowing trade without conditions and requirements mm -hmm. to mitigate the potential for us to exacerbate the situation. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to show how much these reformers are not reformers. So for instance, as we mentioned, Parliament actually passed two land laws um, mm -hmm. that gave the government more power to strip away people's lands. For it's, any reason. Yeah. 
And so you're looking at, so while we talked about 2 million acres being taken, we're actually looking at the potential of if you examine that land, you know, and, and Jeff could speak to this, of potentially, you know, tens of millions of acres that they actually do want to eventually try and take underneath their control. Um, two million acres is actually an underestimate. It is, it is. And it's only a, and it's only for a recent time period. It's yeah. not for a historical time period. Um, because, you know, with Burma's conflict, you have to look at it at, at, in more um, long-range historical context. Uh, because you do have um, just some numbers to throw out there for you. You're looking at, in addition to the 250,000 displaced in the past two years, you have over half of a million who are internally displaced from the ongoing conflicts mm -hmm. that have happened in Burma over several decades. And that doesn't include refugee numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and so you really are looking at a very, very large portion of Burma's population that are displaced and needing to address, address that land issue. So then you throw into that that all the international community has now lifted sanctions and looks at, at Burma as a place to invest. And so at least from the U.S. perspective, we were able last year to slightly get a concession from the U.S. government that requires U.S. companies that invest more than 500,000 U.S. dollars to provide um, a report to the U.S. government that is publicly available that shows what human rights procedures and policies they have, what land use due diligence they have done, contact with the Burmese military, sort of to try and shine some light on that these companies have some sort of responsibility um, to make sure that they're not getting involved with Burmese business partners or on land that is known to have been confiscated. And so it's one minor step in which, you know, we are trying to get and we're at the moment, also working on Burma has asked for to be a, what's called a beneficiary developing country mm -hmm. in the generalized system of preferences, which basically means that they would get um, 5,000 different product types uh, imported to the U.S. duty free. And so we again are looking at this issue of well, that would mean that people want to confiscate land because then there's the benefit of producing products that could be imported duty free. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get the U.S. government to say, well, no, you cannot be part of this program until you take land reform, amend the land laws, address forced labor, address child labor, address labor, labor union, collective bargaining rights issues. Um, and so, but this, this gets to, this is like a very complex myriad here of just for us as U.S. Convene for Burma, trying to make sure that when we see these very serious problems in Burma, in which the government is, is, has been part of the problem, not part of the solution like the international community right now is viewing them, to trying to get our interventions to not become part of the problem and at least try and make sure that they are either trying to help create a solution um, or you know have sort of a, a neutral a neutral impact on the human rights and land issues inside Burma. Um, 